surgeons keep our hearts beating. They do the amazing, help save lives, and so can you. Your CSL Plasma donation can help create 24 critical life-saving medicines that can give Grandpa the chance for his heart to swell when he meets his new grandson or give a bride the chance for her heart to skip a beat on her wedding day. Every plasma donation helps more than you know. Do the amazing. Help save lives. Donate today at your local CSL Plasma Center and be rewarded for your time. Exhausted race. All of those five oh, things. All of those five things were so exhausting to do. Oh, oh do my know, god! Do, it was the face first? punching. Dave actually got me. He punched me square in the fucking jaw. I got I got smoked. I had to shove him down the stairs, and he just laughed as he tumbled all the way down, and then came ran, well, running back up to punch me in the face again. Oh, crazy Dave! There was the first thing. Then there was the second thing, followed mm. by the third thing, and then the fourth and the fifth. Thank you. And um, that was it. Anyway, that was a lot of things. Let's carry on. Yeah. Um, I don't think Crazy Dave has eaten in the past twenty-two days. So, no. like, he's like he's ravenous for faces. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh, what's behind door number twenty-two? <laughs> Another digital door. It's like it's, oh, it's still going. Go have to get that looked at. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be a good one. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> <laughs> It's an interesting one, but it's also kind of this is this is uh, called Cards to Prisoners of War. Whenever you say we've got a good one, something in the back of my head says this is going to be depressing. Yes. I feel like you get off on depressing shit. It's just <laughs> something about you, like oh boy, depression. Like it's just like, mm, mm. I don't get off on depression. I, I well, I, I, I like <laughs> I like things with a bit of emotional depth, and sometimes that. Yeah, but it brings you a bit of glee. I can see a glint in your eye. Do you know what like, you know I like of? I like the fact that um, I like trying to see, watch you painfully navigate a sensitive topic while make, trying to make jokes. Try to look for an angle where you can make a joke. Yeah, and that is fun for you. I can see that. And then you're like, oh, I, I, I don't want to go there. This, <laughs> that's always fun. But anyway, this is fun for you. Yeah, what's, it is so, fun for me. All right, bring it. So uh, we all remember our favorite, uh, the longest serving prime minister of Canada and prime minister during World War II, Mackenzie King. Mackenzie King, my uh, favorite. Talk to the dead. Talk to the dead. So he, anyway, he was writing uh, greetings cards to prisoners of war during World War II. That's actually very sweet. Yeah. And Dr. Kajabi took five minutes out from his other activities to right. do that. Yeah. Yeah. So across Canada, there were military families who had not been home for the holidays, and there were 1,600 Canadian forces members deployed around the world. And these are prisoners he's writing to. He's writing to the prisoners. So he said, all Canada enjoys joins in the warmest gr- Christmas greetings and good wishes to you. And uh, this is a picture of the card. Oh, you actually have a, you have a picture, picture of the, of the card, card is itself. Mackenzie wow, okay. He's got a lovely signature. He does, actually. It's, it's a really mine's, nice. mine's just a that's scribble. A, that's a sexy signature. Do you know what I... I can't. I'm. I'm. So he didn't write the card. The card is. He, been, si- he, signed he the signs card. the card. But I'm. I'm it's not like he write a personal card to prisoners. That would be. I no, thought no, no. that's what he was talking. Like it's like that's a really personal well, touch. Do, but, but do you know why though? Because when you're when you're at war, too busy having sex. No. So when you're at war with another country. Yeah. Um, they don't. If you go, can you give these letters to our prisoners of war? That's not a priority for them when you're bombing the shit out of them. True. So, um. Amazingly, some of them actually did get through to Canadian prisoners of war. So uh, an, a, a man named Arthur Kenneth Fire from Paris, Ontario, was captured in the Battle of Hong Kong in 1941 and was held for four years oh in, in Japanese prison camps. And, you know, from what I've heard, they were not nice. And they were beyond not nice. They were awful. Not like Canadian prison camps. Not like Canadian prison camps. Camp 20. Oh, Camp 20 with the... The uh, pancake, the, pancake breakfast yeah. and the the zoo where you could wrestle a bear, bear. Yeah. <laughs> which we all which we all know and love. Not like the, those adorable Canadian prison camps. This was a um, yeah. That's how you best describe Canadian prison camps. Adorable. Is adorable. <laughs> yeah. This was the opposite of that. It was literally hell on earth, and that's horrible. many people died horribly. Jesus. Um, and the card is the king's. King uh, Mackenzie King's signature and words: uh, "All can all Canada joins in warmest Christmas greetings and good wishes to you." So it got through to Arthur, and 
uh, he kept the card for 69 years. Wow. Um, so he was... So uh, he was one of the like other actually, other prisoners got cards he, as well. Yeah, he, he, he actually preferred to be called Ken. His name was Arthur Kenneth Fire. So Ken was 19 years old when he enlisted in August 1940. He was uh, um, one of nearly 2,000 troops sent to Hong Kong to defend the British colony. And when the Japanese invaded, it fell after 17 intense days of fighting, and he was captured and sent to a prison camp, a prison camp in Hong Kong and China. And uh, nearly 300 of his comrades had died in captivity from malnutrition, disease, overwork, and brutality. Oh, my God. But he did. He got his card. How, did, he, they get his, how did he get a card I, amongst that? I don't like know. It's it it amazing. And he kept it. And then uh, when he was... So he, he kept it safe for 69 years. And then in uh, on November the 11th, 2012, he donated it. Uh, he presented it as a memento to uh, Prime Minister Stephen Harper. And it was then uh, donated to the War Museum, the Canadian War Museum. At least it got into a museum and not Stephen Harper's private collection. Yeah, that would have been a pain in the ass. But right. it, it did go to the war. I don't think he could have, in good conscience, kind of held onto that. It, it belongs think in he a has museum. A good conscience? Well, 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 there were cameras was... filming him, so he didn't have a choice. Right, yeah, okay. The cameras, the public record was the conscience. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, I mean, forget about Stephen Harper. Ken's life sounds incredible. It does sound, yeah. For him to keep that for so long and then donate it to a museum. And for him to get the card in the first place, so he's one of the very few people to actually get a Christmas card in the prison camp. Wow, the Canadian Prime Minister! Imagine what that must have done. How would that? How would that card get to him? I'm really curious. Like, if it's if it's as a horrible prison camp as as you're saying it is, how does? I just like I'd love to know the journey that that card went on to that would get be, into that his would be hands. A fascinating documentary, just the perspective of that. Card. That really would be <laughs> honest. I don't know. Like it seriously would be. That'd be fascinating, right? Like you'd have to get into a car, into the hands of a guard that liked him or didn't yeah. hate him, you know, or something like that, in order for it to be, like, yeah, that's that's, that's amazing. So bizarre. But anyway, and when he finally gets it, like here, this is from your prime minister, and it's and it's just. A, a stamped card with his signature on it. It's nothing personal whatsoever. Like, <laughs> well, that fuck is, you! That is, his, that is his signature, but it was, yeah, it was one of those generic messages. Insert generic message, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of uh, thing. God. But, but man, still, you know, just the fact to get that must have been a big morale boost. And then to keep it safe for that long. I that was amazing. I'm, if I ever go to the War Museum, I'm going to go and read his card. I will totally. Which War Museum? I will know museum? the story to tell my kids. Which museum is it in? Where? The War Museum. I guess it's the Canadian War Museum. I don't know where that is, but... Um, no. Uh, Ottawa, which is no surprise, the right. capital. That makes sense. <clears throat> uh, the Canadian War Museum. Uh, it's the Canadian War Museum is a national museum of the country's military history in Ottawa, Ontario. The museum serves as both an educational facility on Canadian military history, in addition to serving as a place of remembrance. There you yeah. read that very quickly. Thank you. That's good. That's uh, it's you open, should put on your resume. They're open 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. <laughs> and till 8 p.m. on a Thursday. <laughs> and there's safety measures in place. Thank you. No problem with you for that. Okay, that's cool. a fascinating story. It is a, fascinating a little story. depressing, but also kind of like I yeah, don't know, but heartfelt, heartfelt, yeah, heartfelt and depressing. Just, yeah, just, just the way you like it. Depressingly heartfelt. Yeah, that's uh, like a Pixar film. <laughs> let's not get back into cars. Let's not talk about cars. Let's not do it. Jesus Christ! Don't do it. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Don't fucking tell. Okay. <laughs> tell us about night uh, night twenty two of a fuck hack. Reese, what do I have to expect on night Tonight is called Night Night, where everyone dresses like a knight, and that's it. <laughs> night Night. You don't do anything? You don't joust? You just have to you do don't have sword dressed. fights? It's just Night Night. Just dress up in everyone, full play everyone, on my... Everyone gets their plate, best suit of armor. plate armor? Is that pl- plate mail armor? Chain mail armor. Chain mail, chain mail armor, that's it. Yeah. yeah, and just Night Night. Night Night. And that's what you say when you go to sleep. Night 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 Night. Night Night. <laughs> <laughs> or night 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 however you want to say it yeah okay well I look forward to uh, borrowing some of, of your you can borrow my okay. fine British armor oh well okay I'm, there's a museum I can break into I'm sure I can figure something out yeah, cool. it'll be fun fun night Yay. don't forget the well what day is it the, the Canadian War Museum closed at 4 so you can break in there exactly there, there you we go, go. Yeah. perfect Thank you for the road trip okay night 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 night
ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Are you ready for some personality in your personal finances? Hi, I'm Janice Torres Rodriguez, Latina money expert and host of the award-winning podcast, Yo Quiero Dinero. On this show, we're serving up POC-friendly personal finance knowledge, always with a side of sass. We're not talking about avocado toast and lattes on this show. We've got real, relatable personal finance knowledge that makes you feel seen, heard, and finally understood. Consider me your super cool, slightly risque, but always honest financial fairy godmother. Together, we'll tackle dinero in a fresh new way so you can finally become poderosa with your dinero. Check out our weekly podcast episodes at YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. ACAST helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. ACAST.com.